whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. In the constant war against crime, law enforcement agencies move quickly and efficiently against the enemies of society. And often the highway patrol moves just as quickly and just as efficiently to prevent a crime. On the morning of June 17th, Jack Dunning and Peter Barker, hardened criminals who had a long record of arrests, came to Cedarville to visit an old cellmate, Martin Haggard. The purpose of their visit? Murder. Is Marty here? Oh, yes, but he's sleeping. You must be Joan. Well, I am, but who are you? Well, I'm Peter Barker, and this is Jack Dunning. Yeah, we're old friends of Marty's. Oh, well, won't you come in? <laughs> Pete! Marty! Hey, Jack! Hey, Marty! Marty. Oh, oh, Marty. Oh, oh, Marty. Oh, oh, how are you? What are you two characters doing here at Cedar? Oh, we're just passing through. Thought we'd look up an old friend and cellmate. Oh, it's all right. Joan knows all about me. Sit down, sit down. We're trying to forget that. Martin and I are building for tomorrow. Building for tomorrow. Say, that, that sounds real pretty. <laughs> I don't know about pretty, but it's hard work. Hey, this is my first day off in two weeks. Two weeks? That's worse than being in jail. <laughs> oh, don't say that. Well, I, I sort of like the overtime. You know, the extra pay it sort of fills out the paycheck at the end of the week. Hey, how about you two characters staying to lunch, huh? It's all right, isn't it, honey? Oh, of course it's all right. Please stay. Oh, we'd love to, ma'am, but... Well, you see, I got this throat condition and... Well, the fact is, I'm on a special diet. I can't eat everything. I know all about special diets. You do? Oh, yes. Ever since Martin's had diabetes, I've had to be careful of what I feed him and how and when. Say, that's right. That hit you last time you was in. Yeah. Now, what can't you eat? Well... I'm supposed to have calves liver, ground calves liver. Well, that's no problem. I'll run down to the store and get some. Now, you just wait here. I'll only be a few minutes. Say, uh, can I go, ma'am? No, you and Peter visit with Martin. You two guys aren't just passing through Cedarville. You came here to see me, right? Well... Fact is, Bixby's getting kind of worried about you. Why? Well, Bixby's a pretty big man. Now this investigating committee is beginning to nose around his activities, and you're the only one he isn't sure of because you're not with us anymore. Look, I've, I've got no reason to talk. I didn't before. Why should I do it now? But what if they get you on the witness stand and start asking you questions? Oh, I say I don't remember. I've been on the witness stand before. I think Bixby himself would like to hear you say that. It put his mind at ease. Well, where is he? He's waiting in a motel on the edge of town. We'll take you to him. Yeah! He can take you to him right now. Can't we wait until Joan gets back? Oh, no, no, we'd better not. I'm afraid we won't be able to stay for lunch. Yeah, but the calves liver, you said Just that... an excuse to get her out of the way so we could talk to you. Oh, you'd better leave her a note so she doesn't start fixing lunch. Yeah. Uh, don't tell her you're going with us. Just say, well, that we had to leave and you've gone to visit a neighbor's house. I don't want her to know anything about Bixby. How long will it take? Just long enough for you to convince Bixby that you won't talk. I'll just get my insulin kit. Oh, you won't need that. I always take it with me. 
Oh, we'll just be gone a few minutes, Marty. Come on, Come on Marty. <laughs> Hello, Hazel. This is Joan. Is Marty there? No, it's all right. Thanks. Roberta, this is Joan. Is Marty there? If you see him, will you tell him to come right home? Thanks. Operator, get me the highway patrol. Matthews. Who? I put her on. My husband's Martin Haggard. He's a diabetic and he's gone off without his insulin kit and I'm worried. How long has he been gone? Oh, about 15 minutes. And he's due for his next shot in three hours. Well, I'd give him a chance if I were you. But you don't understand. Two of his old cronies were here, a Jack Dunning and a Peter Barker. Martin was in prison with them. Well, what's your address? 720 Willow Road. We'll look into it right away. Yes, sir. I want to run down on Martin Haggard, Jack Dunning, and Peter Barker. You can reach me at the Haggard House, 720 Willow Road. I'll be there in about 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Matthews, Highway Patrol. Come in. Thanks. Thank you for coming, even though I do seem hysterical. Well, you don't at all. Now, just take it easy and start from the beginning. Well, Martin works at the aircraft plant, and today was his first day off in two weeks. He was taking a nap, and I was catching up on my sewing when in walked Jack Dunning and Peter Barker. I'd never seen them before. Well, I didn't think anything of it, because Martin greeted them like old friends, and... They were going to stay to lunch, and so I ran down to the store. And when I came back, they were gone. And, and I found this note. Don't you believe what it says? I've called all our friends in the area. None of them has seen Martin. Hello? Mr. Matthews, please. It's for you. Thanks. Matthews. Martin Hager, Jack Dunning, and Peter Barker. All ex-convicts connected with the Bixby Combine. Their records include armed robbery, assault, and extortion. They are now being sought for questioning by a special committee investigating Bixby. I'd hold it. What kind of a car did Dunning and Barker have? A black four-door sedan. Alert all units. Three suspects in a black four-door sedan. Yes, sir. You know a guy by the name of Bixby? No, who is he? He's a racketeer on a national scale. He's being pushed out in the open. Your husband used to belong to his syndicate. He might still. My husband hasn't had a dishonest thought since we met almost a year ago. He's become a decent, hard-working citizen. I hope you're right. Well, I know I'm right. You've got to find him before anything happens to him. Yeah. Oh, well, don't just shake your head. If Martin doesn't get his insulin shot on time, he'll go into shock. Diabetic coma, do you understand? You said you were taking me to see Bixby at a motel. Well, he doesn't want to see you, Marty. He just wants to make sure you don't talk. He'll never get away with killing me. Who 
was trying to. Oh, you're going to die, sure, but... We won't kill you, Marty. Come on, buddy. Around front of the car now. We don't want anything to happen to you, Marty. No bullets, no wounds, no nothing. We just want to lock you up in this shack until tomorrow or, or maybe the next day. But I've got to have my insulin. I, I... We figured you'd rather have it this way, Marty. And leave your wife out of it completely. Isn't there any way I can convince you or Bixby that I won't talk? Can you think of any better way than this? But they'll know it's murder. No, they won't. Look, we'll come back in about 36 hours and open that door. We'll leave it wide open. When they find you, they'll think that you just wandered away from home. There'll be no signs of any crime, just a diabetic who went into shock. So long, Marty. You wouldn't want to be caught with that gun after our recent visit to our old buddy. Better dump it down the road a piece. and Peter Barker, vicious criminals and members of the Boxby Combine, had hit upon a unique method of silencing an ex-member of the gang who had gone straight. Without his insulin, Haggard would die. There would be no traces of violence when Dunning and Barker returned and opened the door to the shack. Of you with your hands up. Put up. Out of the car. All right, they stand over there. Come on, around here. Turn around, put your hands up in the car. You two, get in there. Put off it, sir. What's this all about, officer? We haven't done anything. That's right. We, we were just passing through. What's your name? Peter Barker. Yours? Jack Dunning. Where's your other friend? What other friend? Now, listen, are we on an arrest, officer? 2285-2150. 2150-5. I just picked up Barker and Dunning traveling east on Highway 84, near the junction of Old Mill Road. Martin Haggard is not with them. What kind of a car were they driving? Black sedan, 
As per description. I'll let the lab pick it up and check it for all tests. Right, 10-4. 10-4. I want you to come to headquarters. Identify Barker and Dunning. Well, what about Martin? We'll find him. Get his insulin. They're inside, Mr. Matthews. You wait here. You must be the number one man around here. I'm Dan Matthews. Well, Mr. Matthews, would you tell your boys they're making a mistake? We haven't done anything. We're just riding through. Well, what is it we're supposed to have done? Mrs. Haggard, hello. Sorry we couldn't stay for lunch. What have you done to my husband? We haven't done anything to your husband. Is that what we're in for? You think we've done something to Martin? Oh, we, we wouldn't think of doing anything to Marty. He's our friend, our buddy. <laughs> he was sort of sore when we couldn't stick around for lunch, but, well, he, he always was a big, good-natured, generous guy, you know? I really do have to have ground calves liver, Mrs. Haggard, but we just couldn't stay. Wasn't Marty home when you came back from the store? Please, you've got to make them tell you what they've done to Martin. He's got to have his shot in an hour and a half. He's got to. It's not going to work, Barker. I don't know what you're talking about. Let me put it this way. If Hager dies because he didn't get his insulin shot, and you're responsible for putting him someplace where he couldn't get it, you're going to be tried for first-degree murder, both of you. Didn't you leave out just one more if, Mr. Matthews? If you can tie us up to this whole thing? Just don't believe me, do you? No, I don't. Matthews. I'll be right in. What have you got? See for yourself. The lab report on the stuff found under the fenders of the car. It's a special kind of gravel found in four areas within a 30-mile radius. Here. Well, let's see now. Found the car here. So it could be Paradise Cove. Preston Falls. The development at Silman or Carter's Quarry. Could be any one of those spots. But which one? It's a good question. We got less than an hour to find out. You can save us a lot of trouble if you tell us where Haggard is. You still don't believe me. Look, we know you dumped him at one of four places. Paradise Cove, Preston Falls, Silman, or Carter's Quarry. Which one and where did we find Haggard? I knew I'd tell you. I wouldn't want anything to happen to my old buddy. We have a rough idea where your husband is. They've told you? You better come with me. Have units go to Preston Falls, Paradise Cove, Silman, and Carter's Quarry. Have them search for Haggard. If you hear anything, contact me. Yes, sir. Come on. Headquarters to 2173. Well, why are we stopping here? We're in the center of the four points where your husband might be hidden. No need to drive him around. We'll wait till everybody checks in. Well, how long? Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by. Units checking Paradise Cove and Preston Falls report negative. What about the Silman development in the quarry? Waiting for report. 10-4. 10-4. Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by. 
Unit checking Silman housing development reports negative. That leaves the quarry. Who's at the quarry? Officer Dennis. Moving to join him. 10-4? 10-4. Haggard! Haggard! I've been yelling for him, but I get no answer. Are you sure he's here? Well, the other three checked out negative. Of course he can't answer. He's in shock by now. If we don't find him within the next few minutes, it'll be too late. So let's not stand here. Check everything out over there? Yeah. Or try it in that direction. I'll go around here. Yes, sir. Gotta keep trying. We're going to find out. Get me a tire iron or something, will you? Right. Martin. Well, let me have it. Oh, he's in shock, bad shock. We'll have to get him to the hospital. I'll get an ambulance. I asked headquarters to send out an ambulance. Also to alert the hospital to stand by for a diabetic shock victim. Good, you stay with her. I'm going back to headquarters. Right. Where's that ambulance? The shot didn't do him any good. It'll be here soon. They'll never replace food. You shut up. You're making me hungry. That makes two of us. We found him. Good. Now, do we get out of here? He's not dead, Barker. Where did you find him? Where you put him. Did Martin tell you that? He didn't say. He must have gone to a diabetic shock. He sure was one swell guy. Matthews, I put him on. What is it? Thanks. He's alive and talking. We're going to hold you for attempted murder. What kind of animals are you, anyway? Just human animals, Mr. Matthews. I'd rather face a jail sentence any day than Bixby. Oh, you're going to see Bixby. He's going to be your cellmate. Book him. Punks. Sergeant. 
Sea Highway Patrol next week. Until then, remember, leave your blood at the Red Cross or your community blood bank, not on the highway. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week.